This free step-by-step -step video comes to you directly from Haynes. You can complete more than 200 jobs on this vehicle when you purchase the complete Haynes online manual at haynes.com. Place chocks each side of the front wheel, diagonally opposite to the one being removed. Use the wire hook included in the vehicle toolkit to pull the wheel trim from place. Using the special anti-theft wheel bolt adapter where necessary, slacken each of the wheel bolts half a turn. With the jack head under the reinforced section of the door sill flange, raise the vehicle until the wheel is clear of the ground. Position an axle stand under the reinforced section of the sill to support the vehicle. Fully unscrew the bolts. And remove the road wheel. Prise away the side trims Release the clips and remove the rear ashtray from the centre console Slacken the handbrake cable adjuster nut Detach the cable end fitting from the lever on the caliper. Unscrew the caliper upper and lower guide pin bolts, counter holding the guide pins with a second spanner. Note that new bolts will be required. Slide the caliper from place and suspend it from the suspension strut with wire to prevent straining the rubber hose. Prise the outer and inner brake pads from the mounting bracket. Then remove the lower and upper shims. Measure the thickness of each brake pad including the backing plate. If either pad is worn at any point to 7.5mm thickness or less, all four pads must be renewed. Using aerosol brake cleaner and a soft brush, remove all brake dust from the caliper and mounting bracket. Check that the guide pins slide easily in the mounting bracket and that the rubber gaiters are not damaged. If new brake pads are to be fitted, it will be necessary to retract the piston fully into the caliper bore. To avoid any dirt entering the ABS solenoid valves, clamp the brake hose. Remove the rubber cap. Then connect a pipe to the bleed nipple. The caliper piston must be rotated clockwise at the same time as it's pushed back into the caliper body. Ideally use a piston retraction tool, although a pair of circlip pliers engaged with the slots in the piston face will suffice. As the piston is pushed back, open the nipple and allow the displaced fluid to flow through the pipe into a suitable container. When the piston is fully retracted, close the bleed nipple and remove the tool.
Disconnect the pipe. Refit the rubber cap and remove the hose clamp. Press the upper and lower shims into place on the caliper mounting bracket. Locate the inner brake pad into place, ensuring the friction material is against the disc face. Then slide the outer pad into place. Refit the caliper over the brake pads, then press it into position. Fit the new guide pin bolts. And tighten them to the specified torque. Repeatedly depress the brake pedal to bring the pads into full contact with the disc. Repeat the procedure on the remaining rear brake, then check the fluid level in the reservoir and top up if necessary. Reattach the handbrake cable end fitting to the levers on the calipers. With the handbrake fully released, Slacken the adjuster nut until both rear caliper handbrake levers are back against their stops. Then tighten it again until the gap between each lever and its stop is as specified. Check that both wheels stroke discs rotate freely. Then check the adjustment by applying the handbrake fully and counting the clicks from the handbrake ratchet. There should be four to seven clicks before the handbrake is fully applied. If necessary, readjust. Refit the rear ashtray and clip the side trims into place. Locate the road wheel over the hub. Then insert and lightly tighten the retaining bolts. Remove the axle stand and lower the vehicle to the ground. Tighten the road wheel bolts to the specified torque. Align the valve with the cutout, then press the wheel trim firmly into place. Don't forget to remove the wheel chocks.